In this episode, we are going to run you through our mast and what is going on with that. Now, if you're new, we're also going to run through how it is that we ended up having leopard catamarans deliver a brand new 60 foot mast to us here in Trinidad because of issues with the original mast. I'll also let you know about a development on the boat that I am really, really happy about. issues with our mast like many go back to Cape Town and it was most noticeable when the boat was leaving Cape Town sailing from South Africa to Europe where Rose and I were waiting. <laughs> During that voyage Trent and Tynan could hear a slapping sound inside the mast and I think we all know a slapping sound is not good. It's not the ropes. Cape. Mast. Leave the electronics last till we get there. Things got worse. Between Cape Verde and the Canary Islands, they lost all wind instrument data. They ended up having to continue the voyage all the way to Gibraltar using the manual wind instrument at the top of the mast, using a torch at night to be able to see it. While we were in Gibraltar, we were able to ascertain that there was something wrong with the cable of the wind instrument. We didn't know what at the time, we just knew that something had happened and it was not working. The thing about Gibraltar is there's no facility to take off a mast this size and we were also on a deadline. We needed to get to Croatia to collect our sea container and then go on to Monfalcone in Italy. So what we ended up doing was running a temporary cable through the mast, connecting that all up and that along with some of the other work we did with the Raymarine tech there got us on our way. When we got to Monfalcone in Italy, the first things we did was organise to have the mast taken off. As soon as it lifted off the deck, it became extremely apparent there was an issue as pieces of conduit and debris started showering out the bottom. Conduit coming uh, out. It's just shut into pieces. Full of it. Huh. This is what we've had to listen to from this is what we've had to listen to from God knows where in the ocean to here. It's all wedged in there sideways. I don't know how it's all. Do you want me to get it? I don't know how it's all it's all wedged in there like you look look up in the hole. Like it's a, like it's a joke. Over our time in Italy we undertook investigations of the inside of the mast. We had to take out a lot of conduit that was smashed and broken. Some sections of it had drill holes that lined up with the holes for the steps on the mast. And we later found out that these steps had been installed in the incorrect position and that when they were installed, it drilled through the T-section and the conduit in some areas. Now that damage to the conduit meant that the cables were not retained and protected and as a result, there was a significant amount of damage to the cables inside the mast too. Now, in Italy, we had the issue of dealing with Robertson and Kane. That's detailed quite a bit in the video, what is a Robertson and Kane warranty worth? But essentially, we found it very difficult to get answers from them. They would not give us any fixed procedures at that time. And in Europe, there are implications for contractors doing warranty work without direct guidance from the manufacturer. And that made it almost impossible to find anyone who would work on the boat. We tried up until the last minute to find someone who could help find a permanent solution to the mast. And in the end, we were not able to find anyone. And on the last day, we were up for about over 30 hours straight finding a temporary solution that would hold the cables out of the way so the mask could go back on and a permanent solution could be installed later. 
the temporary solution that we had used cable ties that were snatching the cables in the whole way up the mast. And I mean, it worked, it got us here. And when we had someone out from ZSPARS in Gibraltar, they didn't make a comment either way. And I'm sure if they thought it was, you know, a terribly unsafe idea, they would have said something. Once we arrived in Trinidad, that is when communications had largely switched from being with Robertson and Kane to Travelopia, which is the company that oversees Sun Sour Moorings and the Leopard Catamarans brokerage. Now what we expressed to them is what we had always said. We wanted a permanent solution to fix the issues with the mast. We, just, we didn't want to be dealing with it again. In a departure to what we had largely experienced before, they didn't spend months analyzing and discussing and investigating every single little aspect of the issue. Instead, they just acted decisively. They decided to lead the way and ship an entire new single-piece mast to Trinidad, presumably at a very high cost to themselves. Having that new mast arrive, it's hard to explain the sense of relief after having so much stress and anxiety tied up in how we were actually going to get this fixed. So we are really appreciative of the people at Travelopia who made this possible and made it happen, as well as those at ZSPARS both in the US and in Europe who helped facilitate this for Travelopia. The new mast is still sitting in the box where it was delivered mid last year because the boat simply isn't ready for it yet. The tent is still up and all work that requires it or is easy to do with the tent still up must be finished first, including gel coat repairs, deck fit and installing and backfilling windows. We are hoping to see that happen though in the next couple of months. But to speed things up a little bit, Tynan and I are stripping the mast. This afternoon we're going to start a task that we thought we'd be over and done with last year but finally going to start it today and that is we're going to start stripping things off the mast. When the mast first came down we thought we would only be in Trinidad for like three months so it went to the back of the boat and we just kind of put it into storage mode you know we waterproof things, taped up holes so we wouldn't get wasps, that sort of thing. But now given where we are and how long we've been here we've decided that today is the day for us to start trying to strip things off the old mast and we'll put them in a safe place up out of the weather. And then when we are ready for the new mast to be fitted, because what's in that box is just the stem, everything needs to be transferred across. When that's actually happening, all this stuff will be ready to just go on. So that is the plan for this rather beautiful Saturday afternoon. I'm just gonna start by like around the radar, the front facing camera that I'll take off. Um, right for a radar, we'll work our way down to take the steaming light, the deck light, anything that's kind of nut and bolted on, um, and anything that needs to be protected from the weather. This is actually not our first radar on LIGA, this is the second one. The first one failed and was replaced under warranty, and Tynan had to install it in Gibraltar and it was a horrible job because he had to do it like going up the mast and that is not an easy thing to do. So this is gonna be a lot easier for you. He's like, he's actually a bit scarred. <laughs> we only have one bosun's chair, so I had to go up by myself, set the old radar down, bring it back down, go back up with the new radar and I was literally just like radar in my arm like this. <laughs> and then kind of hoist it up and then trying to get it on here without dropping it. It's, it's hard to see with the mast on the ground, but the leopard mast is not straight. It has a curve to it and where the radar is, is kind of almost the apex of the curve. So he's on the bottom side of what is now the bottom side, trying to hold himself in and then pull around the front, which is like against gravity and try and balance the radar because if he dropped anything, underneath is all our solar panels. So. Would have been in for a bad time. But he did it, he did it, because it's Tynan, and Tynan, he gets shit done. I said at least there's still silicon grease in here. Oh, so that would suggest that, um... I, when I did... No, water ingress. 
Yeah, yeah, it's like a electrical silicon grease. Back in Europe, um, our rendering camera stopped working and the camera was replaced and it still didn't work. Uh, but that was just before we came to Trinidad, so it kind of got put on the back burner. But while we were just undoing the plug at the end here, I was looking at it and I noticed that there's like a cut in the insulation. So, I mean, I can't check the rest of the cable yet, but we're going to assume that's probably why it's not working. So, I'm going to have to order another one. And this one, once this mask gets completely stripped, I guess we'll just go in the bin and we'll put a new one into the new mast and then hopefully that will solve the camera problem. Because it would be nice to have a working eyeball camera. If we got one, I may as well, may as well be working. So, finish pulling this camera off and then we'll start on the radar. yellow that's around uh, the stainless steel highway and the aluminium plate. You can also see it by the light there. It's a product called Duralac. So what the Duralac does is you apply it to both surfaces and then when you put it together it just like forms a gasket and seals the area. So you don't get any um, of that white powder and galvanic corrosion and you won't have, over time, a great big hole forming in a piece of aluminium because of a stainless steel rivet or screw or bolt. Uh, I've used Duralac on fittings that I don't plan on disassembling. So like the radar and the camera. <laughs> <laughs> something, something I never planned on having to pull all apart again. Um, the, the bolts and fittings, things that you'll pull apart frequently. Um, I use Tef gel because it's, it does the same thing but it's, it's grease. Easy to get things on and off versus the Duralac can kind of glue them together almost a little bit. Yeah the Duralac once it's on there and it's dried it's on there. The cables aren't very long. No that's alright I can just hold it and you just thin it out. If you're ever going up the mast or doing anything with the radar, like turn it off, like don't just stop it transmitting, but completely turn it off, especially if you want kids. <laughs> because we have so many fittings and fixtures and bow parts and everything coming on and off, we have to be really careful with our labeling system, otherwise... <laughs> Left pocket, right pocket. You'd have no idea. And these will go up in a box that we have upstairs that has hundreds of bolts in it. Be worse, could have been an ankle. Um. You think about pulling, you gotta pull those ones out too? Yeah. Well, I might um, get some scotch bright and just rub Maybe all not. of the aluminium down, get yeah. it looking nice again, and then um, I might look into putting a, a clear coat on it or something, like an aluminium clear coat, yep. and then it'll be that shiny. Or I might just get like a, like a gunmetal grey or powder coat grey yep. so it matches the rest of the mask. Yeah. The grub screw that holds this plate in has been rounded Inside, cool beer, air conditioning, I think that's the way to go. Yeah. The next thing we're going to do is take off these two lights. So this one here is our steaming light. When it's night time and we are motoring rather than sailing, this one goes on just so that other boats know that's what we're doing. And then obviously we do have the navigation lights on at the top of the mast. This one here is the deck light. It's not the one that Leopard Catamarans come with as standard. 
This one is made by Rigid in America. And we changed to them because we had always had Rigid light bars on the full drives. We actually had one on the boat, but it malfunctioned and we actually did a little bit of a destruction test because as part of the warranty process, we did have to prove to Rigid the fault, which we did. And once that happened, we had to prove to Rigid that we had destroyed the light bar, which we did. <laughs> I don't know if that broke it enough. Fair to rigid. That, that did really well. So this um, shines down on the deck. We have a switch inside to do that and a switch at the helm as well. Might as well take both of these off because they're going to have to get reinstalled on the new mast as well. So do you think we're going to reuse these ones or use Possibly. something else? Possibly. Yeah, that just means cleaning them, which is alright. We clean lots of bolts around here. <laughs> they didn't put the Duralac -like all the way up to the end here and it's kind of dug in the mast and when I pulled it off a little bit of white powder came off. But other than that, I mean this bit's metal so this bit's fine. Hello! And she's gone. You stay there. <laughs> Rose, come! I'm gonna leave the brackets on. I know, he just touches the stupid boat when it's walk time. You are? Yeah. There's a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be drilled out. Like the pop rivets drilled out. This afternoon we are back over at the mast, not that it's far to go, and what we're going to be doing is taking some of the ropes that are still inside the mast out. Now because we don't really know what Z spars want to do when they get here, we don't want to just pull the ropes out and you know leave them with no idea of where things were. Um, so Tynan went and bought a massive amount of just cheap string that we can use as guidelines and we're going to feed them into the mast so that we have a trace line in there. So far it's going smoothly which is rare to say for the boat job. Alright you ready? Yeah. When we first got here, um, because at the time when we first arrived we didn't know that there would be a new mast, we did things like taping the holes to prevent a wasp infestation which just happened here. Huh? Yeah, yeah, ready. Got it? Which one do you want to do now? The code zero. And is that the last one or are we going to no. do the... Um... No, no, depending on how much uh, ropes left do the uh, sail back. The jack lines? The jack lines yeah. yeah, I think that's a good idea because they are stiff. Okay. When I say the jack lines are stiff, they are stiff. Like, it's electrical cords everywhere. They are defying gravity stiff. So, that's all right. We'll just carefully wash them. I have been in contact with all of the rope manufacturers and received directions from them on how to safely and carefully wash the ropes. We have used all the string that time and bought, but it turns out that string works really well. So probably Thursday we'll go and buy more because again, tomorrow is a public holiday here, so nothing's open. And that's when we'll look at doing the cables inside the mast, um, because that's gonna involve pulling off the mast head and pulling everything out. And as far as I'm aware, even like the mast spreader and the shrouds are getting transferred over. So, you know, to be honest, we probably would have stripped the mast earlier had we known we were going to be here so long. The, uh, the goalpost keeps moving, but hopefully it won't move much further. 
what I'm going to do now, because it is literally my favorite time of day to go for a walk, I'll show you where the mast is and what it kind of looks like at the moment. The mast box is looking a little bit worse for wear, but we've decided to leave it in the box until we're ready to use it and then we'll figure out how we're going to get it out but that just provides a little bit of protection from weather and bird poo and stuff like that hopefully though we're within a month or two of or three of being able to put it back on i've just actually like woken up about half an hour ago and at the moment I'm still staying over in an apartment because of all the work that's going on in and around the boat and the fact that so much of our stuff has to be over there um, but I was like oh you know I know that they were up well Trent at least was up until 4am and I was like oh I wonder how far they got with the window last night have a look Seeing these in, my day has started off really, really well because I wasn't expecting those to be in when I came out this morning. But that now means that four of the saloon windows are now in. There's the two side ones and the two front ones. Mosquito. That is very cool. So what will have to happen next with these is um, the bond is just curing. Once the bond is cured, the excess on the inside and outside can be cut back and then they'll get back filled. And then that will be the port side windows done. Um, that just leaves the back ones and the starboard ones. I think the whole boat that need to be glued in. So this is very, very cool.